So hi, I'm Lasse from uh, Bedit, and I'm going to tell you about uh, sleep tracking and also a cool medical method called ballistocardiography, which I think is uh, very potential for biohacking. Just the, oh. So that's uh, me 15 years ago. I, ago I was a uh, uh, top athlete, I was a triathlete, and, uh, and what happened was that I got into a very, very bad overstress syndrome that ruined one of my seasons. I was sweating, shivering, and I couldn't sleep. And uh, to get rid of that state, I had to sleep with the heart rate monitoring band. That was very annoying, and that was the only way to, to actually track where you're going, what's happening in your body, and how you are able to recover of the, of the daily, daily stress. Then a little later, I was uh, a research scientist in Helsinki University of Technology, and I was developing a chair based on this ballistocardiographic method that uh, a chair has sensors that can analyze the forces coming out of the body and analyze based on those forces the cardiovascular uh, state status and, and do even cardiovascular diagnostics. And uh, this was the beginning where I saw that putting the sensors in the surrounding platform, ambient sensors which are not attached to you, are able to do very accurate heart rate uh, and cardiovascular assessment and, and also could be exploited in bed and in chair or even a standing plot platform like weight scale. So what is ballistocardiography? It's measuring and analyzing the ballistics of the cardiac contraction. So here you see ECG as compared to the BCG. ECG is the electrical activation that makes the heart pump. BCG is the actual mechanical response when the cardiac contraction happens, how the blood bolus is accelerated from the left ventricle, how it hits the arctic arts, and then to peripheral reflections, filling. It can be analyzed in the same way as ECG, but it's the, it's the actual mechanical response, not the electrical activation. So we can measure these forces coming from the cardiac activity outside the body, putting the sensors in the supporting platforms like bed. So here you see the signal from the bed that could be placed in the, uh, the from the sensor that could be placed in the bed. So the sensor looks like this. It's a thin, uh, thin tape that you tape on the mattress under the bed sheets. It's so thin you can't feel it through the bed sheets, and it tracks these micro movements and micro forces while you are sleeping in your bed without wearing any sensors. From that signal, you can see the, the red circles are these uh, PCG uh, forms, those, so uh, heartbeats, and the longer period circle is blue, is a breathing cycle, measured from the chest wall movement that produces similar forces as the heart is producing, but because of breathing. We first targeted when we, uh, this is a spin-off company from that university research, and uh, we first targeted to patient monitoring to hospitals. We were integrating our sensors into the hospital beds to do very accurate heart rate and vitals monitoring, and we had to validate our algorithms against golden medical standards. And we are currently the only company in the world who is able to do accurate enough heart rate vari variability analysis from the mechanical signal. All the other are doing it from the electrical uh, signal of the, of the heart activity. We can do enough accurate measurement from the mechanical signal without touching the body. First product was introduced a uh, few years ago that was called Pedit Pro that was mainly directed to the professional users like uh, personal trainers, sleep clinics, occupational health providers. And it was a gateway device on a bedside desk and you wired the sensor to it and it, it forwarded the data to the web application where we had a huge amount of detailed analytics of the sleep and heart behavior, respiration behavior, snoring, and also we added, uh, uh, added information about uh, uh, about the uh, sleeping environment. Here you can see some images there. We, we detected these uh, sleep states is uh, classified to light sleep, deep sleep, REM sleep, actigraphy like the 
normal movement trackers to if you are wearing them, and then the heart rate curve. That's the typical heart rate curve over the night. It drops toward the morning hours, you're recovering, and then uh, it's, uh, uh, the heart rate is getting a little bit higher again toward the natural wakening. So we didn't leave it there. We, we also did this heart rate variability analysis that we were able to use to assess the stress and recovery status of the autonomous nervous system. So with this tool, just by sleeping in your bed, you're able to optimize the performance. Everything you, uh, basically sleep and this behavior of the heart and respiration, what we measure, they reflect everything, what the person has been doing lately and about the health and also the quality of the sleep and how we recover has an impact to everything what we are able to do in the next day and in the longer term it, it affects to our whole health. There you can see also the two lowermost curves are about the environment, noise signal and light signal which has a big impact to the sleep quality. So this is what we do today. Can we get an audio please? Just place the Bedit sleep monitor on your bed under the bed sheet. Use Bedit and its smart features together with your mobile device. There's no gadgets or any kind of wearable sensors intruding on your good night's sleep. Bedit monitors your vitals and sleep cycles to assess your sleep quality. Sleep affects your overall wellness. During deep sleep, you and your body recover so that you'd be able to perform during daytime. Bedit also gives you tips on improving your sleep quality and offers helpful features like the smart alarm that wakes you up at the optimal time so that you could feel refreshed and energized when waking up. Every morning, the Bedit mobile application gives you an overall assessment of your sleep quality and gives you tips on improving your sleep and wellness. Remember, sleep smart, live better. Bedit. So, uh, obviously for this audience, for bio biohacking and for quantified self, that seems to be a little bit light. So, it's obviously the new mobile application is, is designed for the more mainstream uh, wellness use. But we're just launching the Pedit Cloud web application that the same hardware and the same application forwards the data again to the Pedit Cloud. And there, in the web application, we are introducing again those features from the previous Pedit Professional product to provide uh, really detailed insight also for the professionals and, and for biohacking and for quantified self purposes with all the, also the availability to export the data. There's also an API for developers to develop their own applications and services based on this information. So a couple cases about how, how what, what we've done. Uh, this was the contact to our customer support a few weeks ago. There was a customer who said that everything should be fine and, and the device is working well, it gives the analysis, but I never get any heart rate reading. So we asked him to uh, send the feedback and with the raw, raw signal data. We meant to look at the raw force signal data from the, from the bed to see that uh, there was almost no mechanical response of the heart. So it was a very weak mechanical response and our analysis was not able to pick up the heart rate even the person was lying still sleeping pretty well. And uh, so we got, got back to him and just proposed that maybe you should, we don't want to scare you, but maybe you should go to see a doctor. So he went and found out that he had a very bad arrhythmia, almost constantly bad flimmer, and, and that uh, he's now in, in a treatment and, and was obviously quite thankful to, to us. But this is not just the kind of the more like the biohacking side, side finding of, of, the, of the normal use case. Another case, last year we introduced the product on Indiegogo. We raised over half a million in a, in a, in a short time and uh, we had a very small team, so it was not an easy task. And one of the examples is last push to finalize the campaign. In 14 days, I had 15 flights, 65 hours on a plane, 10 conferences or PR events where I was presenting, over 30 interviews, over 40 meetings in 14 days. So that's what I get, got from the Pedit. 
this time my stress was under control. Not like I was uh, training as a triathlete and as an athlete without having this monitoring. This time I, I, I knew where I was going and I was able to optimize, not pushing myself over the edge. The red uh, signal you can see, that my normal resting heart rate is between 53 and 57. And if it goes to 70, I know I'm in trouble. So whenever it went close to the 70, I knew what I had to do. You also see the uh, sleep duration variating. The, the sleep duration scale is on the right side, so I had between one and four hours many nights, and then I saw the resting heart rate goes up, sleep score going down, and I had to just take my time to sleep and recover. Got it back, uh, got the heart rate back down, knew I was again okay, and it wa was able to, to continue. This was like truly optimizing, minimizing the sleep, minimizing the recovery, and still be able to perform to make that final, final push and then campaign. Then just a couple tasks for you. Uh, there's uh, lowest signal is from our sensor. Middle signal is from uh, uh, clinical polysomnography belt around the abdomen. And then there is uh, the uppermost is the flow pressure sensor signal, which is attached to the nose of the person during the polysomnography. So what do you think what's happening here? Anyone? Yeah, sleep apnea. So it's, uh, you can see the breathing stopping. Uh, there is uh, almost flat line in, in the low frequency range, and it ends up to having the oxygen saturation dropping and then waking up. So there is a lot of movement in the end because the person is waking up. And, and if the heart is too weak, then something else happens. It could be even more flat line. Sorry, sorry, to, sorry to interrupt, but we, we really have to stay to a, a tight time frame, so if you could just okay. like take a, a minute to wrap up and then we'll... Yep. I have my final, final slide here. So another example, a little bit zoomed out. There is the, now the heart rate and breathing are inside this very uh, small signal in the middle and these larger spikes are movements which are now happening every 30 to 45 seconds. Uh, uppermost is the actigraphy reference from the polysomnography and the downmost is our movement sensor. Who would guess what this is all about? It's a periodical limp movement disorder. Person is sleeping very well, but every 30 to 45 seconds moving his limp, keeping the sleep very light and bad quality, and feeling tired every day and not knowing anything about it. Very common issue, about 4 to 5% of population suffer from this. So that's about some examples of the sleep tracking and the interesting method called ballistocardiography. Thank you.